Hello everybody, today we are here with episode 2 of Unpopular Opinion. I am Phantom GG, and I will be speaking on the opinion that Senna should remain viable as an ADC, and it should even be prioritized over Support Senna. I would like for Support Senna to remain viable, but I believe Senna's true home is to remain as an ADC. And to get straight into why I believe that, we just simply need to make the marksman pool bigger. We need more options, and maybe we should even change our design philosophy and how we create marksman champions and how we balance them. The core problem is, when you are playing the game, there is simply not enough options for the marksman role, and this is a problem for many reasons. First off, it's boring. It just makes you kind of forced to play the same characters over and over again. And secondly, if you were to talk about a pro play mindset, it just heavily makes it so obvious in who's going to be played and who's not going to be played. And, and it kind of just puts Riot in this really awkward perspective of, so do we just keep on nerfing the good ADCs in pro play, or do we, like, it just kind of makes balancing kind of weird when you have so very few options in the character role. So let's talk about why is there so few options in Marksman. Um, first off, the obvious one, they just don't make Marksman very often. It's just not something they do that much. Um, secondly, a while ago we had the Marksman rework, and this actually took characters away from the Marksman role, where Corky and Graves were just flat out reworked into new positions. Corky became a mid laner, Graves became a jungler. And this was just really silly because back then we had even less characters for marksmen and we took away two of them. And it was just like, wait, why are you doing this? We don't, we already don't have many marksmen. Why are you taking even more away from us? Um, another point is being some characters were just flat out a failure. They were just a bad idea. Um, Callista, she was a failure. She became a pro play only champion on release. And if you wanted to play her in solo queue, you needed a duo partner. Because a lot of people will say the core issue to Kalissa would be her whole hopping mechanic. No, her, her core issue, at least if we're talking about solo queue. No, even pro play too. Her ult is just not meant for a solo environment. She doesn't get to control her ult at all. It's completely dependent on her teammates. I guess I had to explain what her ult does because no one even sees the champion anymore. And what her ult does is basically you press R and the character you are attached to that you selected at the start of the game becomes untargetable and the person who you are attached to now gets to click a point on the map and the point they click on they will reappear on. If they reappear on top of a champion or champions, the characters they reappear on will be knocked up into the air for about one second. This is a very, very powerful ultimate that basically serves as a Malphite ultimate plus a rescue tool. And at the same time, despite it being so good, you as the Clista player have no ability to control how it works. You are completely at the mercy of your teammates. Even in pro play, you are begging them to click on the right spot that you want them to click on. Which means you as the ADC main lose control the moment the second half of your ultimate is activated. And that is just not a feels good. And then you have Quinn where I don't even need to talk about why Quinn's just a failure. She was just always a failure in design. She feels too oppressive in top lane and in an ADC she has super low range and just like... Quinn just needs a lot of changes in general. So yeah, you, you have Quinn who has just kind of been left in the dust. So you have two characters who were made for the Marksman role, and they were for the most part failures. Um, another problem with Marksman, the fact early game exists. I'm not saying early game and lane phase shouldn't exist, but when you have characters like Twitch, Vayne, and Kogma who are just so heavily bullied in the early game because of their lack of range, CC, and wave clear, they never get to hit late game in the first place. They will just be 0-5 by the time the lane phase is over because you were facing a Draven with a uh, brand support and you were just at 40 CS under your tower never being give it, given a single gank by your jungler. It was just a feels bad moment. So early game actually creates a lot of characters to have a hard time being viable. 
And then the final conclusion why a lot of characters are bad, the fact first champions exist. Like characters like Ash, we're going back to Draven, Misfortune, although Misfortune has a really good win rate right now, but that's another story. They just heavily struggle when Cinder walks up to them and says, Hey, you die now. I, I press R. You, you get get deleted, kid. You played good. Oh, by the way, you can't even dodge it if you don't have Zonias. So what what's being played in the bursty role then, the fact that it's so common, heavily dictates in who it can be played. So, what is good right now? What is good right now, both in solo queue and in pro play at the same time? I know no tournaments are going on right now for pro players, but we can look at what was good at Worlds. And what was good at Worlds is still good in solo queue. And those characters are Kaisa, Ezreal, and Zaya. If you wanted to add some more characters that are good in solo queue, Lucian and Caitlyn are being played up there. And these are like the top 5 most played champions once you're being in Diamond Elo. So what's the key theme that all these characters share? The answer is defense. When Kaisa's being attacked, she can mark a target and she can ult away and she gets a big shield to work with. Um, Lucian, he has his E up all the time because of the auto resets. So whenever Lucian's in a tricky spot, he can just press E. Ezreal is a lot like Lucian. He has his E and his Q puts the E on a shorter cooldown. So Ezreal is just almost never in danger because he can just play from a long way away and just press Q. You have Saya where she can put her snare down and just walk away as people get snared. And if that doesn't work, she can just ult into the air and become untargetable. Then you have Caitlyn. Her auto attack range is just so huge that her range is her defense. Because good luck touching Caitlyn if there's like multiple people on her team who can defend her. You're never going to reach her. So the key theme we see here both in solo queue and in pro play is defense is better than offense. And at the same time, these characters have a offensive form they can be played. Like, these characters don't have to be pure defense. Like, so the core theme is not just defense, but characters that can switch between defense and offense. They have multiple modes and how they can be played. So, wh wh why did this happen? This happened because in the tournament, we saw Kiana Jungle being the most played jungler in Worlds. And, and we saw many characters that were like Kiana Jungle. Where they, ADCs like Jinx, Varus, and Draven, they would just have no chance if you were pit to pick zone. They would just die in seconds. They would be made worthless. So both in solo queue and in pro play, why are you picking these high risk champions with low CC that don't really do much besides auto people? When you could pick a character like Kai'Sa, Lucian, Ezra, or Zyra, or Caitlyn, and you just do more. You have a little bit of CC, you have defense, you can go into an offensive mode. It's just, that's just the better playstyle, and that's always going to be the better playstyle. So unless you gut these characters to oblivion, which you shouldn't, there is no reason to look at the other characters. And I believe this calls to attention and how we need to look at how we create new ADCs in the future and how we should potentially rework some of these champions. I think in the long term of the game, we're going to have to rework just about every single marksman so they're just not stuck on this, hey, I have bigger numbers than you, roll, I kill you now, I auto attack you to death. So why, why is Senna good? Senna has range, she has utility. And she has defense. Senna has everything you want from a meta ADC right now. And because of this, she gets to shine in the role. But because she has a pretty decent win rate, I do believe her numbers are a bit too high right now. But it does put her at risk of being completely gutted and removed from the ADC role entirely. And I believe if we do this, we are making a mistake. Open up a tier list on Mobilytics, open up a tier list on Pro Guides, look at how many options that can be played in mid and top lane, and to compare how they basically are double or triple the size of the marksman role. We don't have that many characters, and this is probably sounds not like a childish reason, but in a role where only like five characters are good, I really think we are making a mistake if we take away a character from that role. We already did that with Graves and Corky. And I believe we are making a huge mistake if we do that a third time. I think Senna is a very interesting champion where she has utility to help out her teammates. And she can be a little bit independent, which most characters struggle with in the marksman role. Uh, a big thing that many marksman players will complain to you about is they don't feel like they get to be independent and take the game in their own hands when all of the other roles are able to do that. But... ADC is a hard role to balance, I recognize this fact, but 
we, we, we only have like even if you include all the marksmen together like 14 15 characters that are marksmen and then only half of them are decent with only three or four of them being good like let's just keep Sanus and ADC let's give ADC mains this win here Affiliates is coming out in a couple of days, and I believe if we keep Senna as an ADC, and then we have Affiliates come in, then we are fixing the problem of Marksman diversity. We are finally having characters that can be played in the bot lane. Let's just avoid taking things away. Let's just find a way where we can balance things properly so both sides can be happy. I am Phantom GG, and that is my belief on this matter. Have a good day.